All right, are you guys ready for the dental basics? In this video, we're gonna go through some of the most basic, basic stuff we have here in dentistry, just so you can get a feel for what it's like with when we're talking about dental numbers, when we're talking about teeth surfaces, when we're talking about dental codes. Um, this is gonna be very, very basic, a very broad overview of some of the most basic dental concepts. And this is mainly meant for people just entering into the dental field. If you've been in dentistry for more than probably a few months or a few years, for sure, all this stuff is gonna be not new to you. You're gonna know all of this already, but this is meant for the people who are just about to begin their dental journey. So ready? So in this video, we're gonna to talk to you about the teeth numbering, about the teeth sides, how you name those sides of the teeth. We're gonna to talk to you about probing, probing depths. We're gonna to talk to you about a profi versus an SRP. We're gonna to talk to you about dental codes, um, and we're gonna to talk to you about maybe touch on some fillings and restorations and how that relates to codes, maybe just a little bit. So like I said, this is dental basics. This is dental basic kind of like 101. This is the first video. I'll probably do a few more going over, over some different things, more specifically fillings versus crowns versus root canals and probably another video on how to replace missing teeth and what are the different options of that. So, uh, let's get started. You ready? You ready? There's a lot of information here, especially if you're new to dentistry, so I'm gonna try to break it down as best as I can. This might be one of those videos where you have to watch kind of back and forth, but um, let's break it down. So, in general dentistry, you have 32 teeth. There's always exceptions to pretty much everything I'm saying, but at most people have roughly 32 teeth. That means you have centrals, which are those two front teeth. You have laterals, which are those side teeth. And then you have canine teeth, which those are the sharper teeth. Right behind that, you have the first premolars. So there's actually two premolars. You have the first premolars and the second premolars. Right behind that, you have the first molar, second molar, and third molar. And you guess it, there's three molars. And so if you put that all together, you have 32 teeth. How do we count the 32 teeth? All right, so it starts from the top right. So the third molar on the top right side is tooth number one, numero uno, tooth number one. And then we basically count in numerical order from top right to top left, and you drop it down to the bottom left to the bottom right. So it'd go like this, the, uh, the third molar on the top right side would be tooth number one. Then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, till 16. You drop it down on the lower left. The third molar on the lower left side would be tooth number 17, and you go all the way to 32. Yes, some people are missing some uh, wisdom teeth, or some people have extra wisdom teeth. It doesn't really matter too much for this particular video. Just know the general concepts that you have 32 teeth. The vast majority of people have around 32 teeth. Go some, when you're numbering them, it goes from the top right to the top left, down to the bottom left, to the bottom right. So one through 16, 17 through 32. Okay, you already have some concepts. You know more than the vast majority of people. So you know how to number teeth, and that's how we number teeth pretty much in most or all dental offices. This will be different than orthodontics. Ortho we do a little differently. I think we do it smarter, but we won't get into that right at this second. Just know that ortho numbers are slightly different than general dentistry numbers. Okay, so you know what the teeth numbering are. I'm gonna go over what the teeth are called again. We just briefly touched on that. Remember the two front teeth are what we call centrals. The ones right beside that are called laterals. The ones behind that are called canines. The ones behind that, we have two of them. We have two premolars, the first and second premolar. And then you have three molars behind that. Let's make it just a little bit more confusing. Sometimes you group the front four together and you call them incisors. So if you have potentially the centrals and laterals and you want to say, okay, I want to group them all together and we're just having a conversation, sometimes I'll talk to them or I'll say that these are the incisors. So not just the centrals and lateral, laterals, but also incisors. And then if you put all six front teeth together, so we say the centrals, laterals, and canines, those are the anterior teeth. Those are the teeth towards the front. Uh, the teeth behind that, say we go from premolar, from the first premolar backwards, those are called posterior teeth. So you have anterior teeth, which are the canines, laterals, and centrals, uh, grouped together, and then you have the posterior teeth, which are basically any teeth behind that. 
quick overview. Okay, you have the centrals, laterals, canines. Sometimes if you're talk, um, talking just about the front two or front four teeth, you'd call them incisors. If you're talking about the front six teeth, those are the anterior teeth. Then you have the premolars and molars. Those are called the posterior teeth. All right, so you know the teeth number in one through 32. You know what the different teeth are called. Now we're going to get into the different surfaces of the teeth. And this is very specific because when dentists are drilling the teeth or whenever they're talking about the teeth, when they're talking amongst each other, not when they're talking to patients, they do not use this lingo. If you're a dentist and you're using this lingo, you are not doing a good job. But if you're a dentist, an assistant, and you're talking amongst each other, you need to know this lingo because it is vital to good communication. So if you have a tooth, and I'm sure I'll have an infographic over here somewhere, the surface of the teeth that is towards the midline, towards the middle of you, those are called the mesial surface of the, surfaces of the teeth. So anything towards the midline. So if I was looking at my front tooth right here, the middle or the mesial surface would be right in between the two front teeth. Right in the middle, that surface is called the mesial. Contrary to that, the back side of the teeth is called the distal surface. So if you have the mesial surface, that's right in between the two front teeth in this example. If I'm still talking about that front central tooth, the, the, the surface in between the central and the lateral for this central tooth would be called the distal surface. I'm sure it's going to make a lot more sense when I have the infographic up there because when I'm speaking it out, I'm like, man, that is kind of confusing, but dentistry is kind of confusing sometimes. So you have the mesial surface, the distal surface, and then you have the facial surface. The facial surface is the, is the surface of the tooth you can kind of see, I guess. It'd be the front surface of the teeth. So this, um, if we go back to the central uh, example again, that front surface of the tooth is called the facial surface. If you go towards the back, sometimes you'll call it the facial surface, but a lot, a lot of the times you're going to call it the buccal surface, the buccal surface. And that's more when you get to the posterior teeth. So front teeth, normally we'll call them facial surface. Most of the time they don't call them buccal. If you go on the, di or if you go towards the back, you call it the buccal surface of the teeth. What's the inside surface called? The inside surface is most of the time called the lingual surface. Why is it called the lingual surface? Because the lingual is the tongue, so it's the inner portion here of the, of the teeth. So all the portions on the inside of the teeth are called the lingual surface. We got one more. We got the occlusal surface, and that is the surfaces of the teeth that you can see. So right on the tops there, that is occlusal surface. That's a, when we're talking about occlusion, that's like the bite, um, how the bite comes together, and that's just talking to you about the tops of the teeth, and that is the occlusal surface. One other one sometimes we talk about is the, the tops of the front teeth. Instead of saying occlusal surface, sometimes we'll say the incisal surface. That is used not quite as much, but that is something that we say as well. So you got the surfaces. You got the mesial, which is towards the midline. You got the distal, which is towards the back. You got the facial or buccal surfaces. You got the lingual surfaces. You got the incisal or the occlusal surfaces. So now you know all the surfaces of the teeth. So you know the surfaces, you know the teeth numbering, um, and you know what they're called. So you guys are doing good. Let's get to the next part. So the next part here is called probing, probing depth. So um, pretty much most patients when they come in for their first visit will come in, they'll get their x-rays, we'll take pictures, and either the dentist or the hygienist is going to do something called probing, and they give, us, they give us probing depths. So the depths of the probe, uh, the probe numbers, indicate how healthy the teeth are. In general, we say one to three millimeters is healthy. Anything over three, so four and up, is unhealthy. If you're getting into the sevens, eight, nine, ten millimeters, it's getting very, very unhealthy. And that helps us diagnose the difference between a prophy or prophylaxis cleaning versus an SRP or a scaling and root planing, otherwise known as a deep cleaning. So you have a prophy, sometimes people may call it a healthy mouth cleaning or just a routine cleaning versus an SRP, which is a scaling and root planing, otherwise known as a deep cleaning. Those are the differences. And most of the time we gauge the difference. For a couple things we do is we do probing depth. So if you have four or greater, then we know, hey, this is likely going to be an SRP or deep cleaning. They will also look at the bone level and if you have bleeding. If you have bone loss, 
and probing depths, most of the time, that is going to be a deep cleaning. So if the dentist goes in there and he probes, or the hygienist probes, and he says, okay, we have a lot of four millimeters, five millimeters, six millimeter pockets, plus I look on the x-ray and I can see that there's a lot of bone loss, and there's a very good likelihood that that patient's going to need a deep cleaning. So that's how we determine the difference between a prophy and a deep cleaning. In the same vein, when we're talking about the difference between a prophy and a deep cleaning, uh, tartar or calculus is going to come into play. So I want to talk to you about the differences of this so you just have a general knowledge. Tartar or plaque, or sorry, plaque is the stuff that you actually can get off your teeth by yourself. So um, sometimes you may see this like little white fuzzy stuff. If you're not brushing your teeth out properly, you'll see it and it's just kind of this white stuff, maybe yellow, hopefully it's not brownish, but it can be something like that. And it looks kind of flaky or mushy. That's the stuff that you can brush off your teeth by yourself and that is called plaque. When it solidifies and it stays on your teeth for a long time because there's not good brushing or flossing, that plaque becomes tartar or calculus and that is the stuff you cannot brush off yourself that's the stuff that you need to have professionally cleaned if you just have a little bit remember and you do not have deep probing depths and you don't have bone loss you can still just be a profi it is a normal routine cleaning the hygienist or dentist will come in there and clean it all off clean off all the tartar um, or the calculus and they'll get it off there and it's gonna look nice and pretty but if you have that and you have a hat on there for a long time, likely your probing depths are gonna be longer or bigger, and then you likely will have some bone loss, and that's why patients need a deep cleaning. Okay, so you know now quite a bit. So you know the basics. You know the teeth numbering, one through 32. You know the different sides of the teeth and what they're called. Remember, mesial, distal, occlusal, facial, lingual, incisal, sometimes occlusal. Um, and then you know what the difference is between an easy cleaning or profi or healthy mouth cleaning or routine cleaning versus an SRP or a scaling and root planing or a deep cleaning. Uh, so you know the differences between that. You know what a probing depths are because we do that pretty much every single visit on almost every single patient. You guys have a big, big knowledge. The last thing I want to touch on is dental codes. And this can be like a whole week long conversation talking to you about dental codes but I want to give you just an overall knowledge so you have an idea of how this works because if you're a dental assistant or if you're in the front dental codes we use on every single patient every single time so you're going to use dental codes like crazy and it's really straightforward once you get the hang of it just initially it's a little tough so dental codes what are they dental codes are something that we use in office and everybody uses the same codes at every single office they're universal to America um, there are specific codes that correlate to specific procedures so if you come in and you get one x-ray we might code that a specific code so that might be like code D0134 or something um, if you if a patient comes in and they need a deep cleaning which we talked about that might be D4341 it's gonna be a specific code for a specific procedure and how this ties into stuff you've already learned. Remember, there's a different surfaces of the teeth um, that we're talking about. So say you come in, or say a patient comes in rather, and they have a, a filling or a cavity on a tooth. Say they have it on a back tooth and it's the mesial and occlusal surfaces. That is gonna be a specific code that goes with that specific filling. So they come in, the dentist sees it, they go, yep, you have um, a, a filling or you need a filling here on this tooth. The assistant will say, okay, that's a code D32, or that's probably gonna be like 2931, or something like that. There's a specific code that goes with that specific procedure. In general, codes are grouped together on the similar function. So codes that are um, to do with prof or to do the preventative, so that means x-rays, uh, maybe exams, maybe profies, they may be grouped in similar codes. So they might be like the hundred or the thousand level codes. So they may be code like 1051 or 1031. They're going to be grouped similar. An extraction code, which is something different, won't start off with that same first number. Extraction codes may be in the 7000s. These numbers are just numbers I'm giving to you. I haven't done these codes for a while, but those are general code. Um, that's generally how codes work here. In ortho, same thing. If an adult patient comes in, there's one specific code that we give to all orthodontic patients. So the general idea is this. There's going to be a lot of different codes, which you don't need to specifically know, but what's going to happen is the dentist is going to say, hey, we need a filling on this tooth. 
its mesial occlusal surfaces, you're going to put it into Open Dental, and Open Dental will tell you the code, and they're going to put it on the patient's chart. So you do not need to know every single code. Nobody knows every single code, but you need to have the general knowledge of what this code means. You go, okay, this one code that I'm doing for this patient means that they need a specific filling on a specific tooth, and that is that code. And like I said, every code is very, very, very specific. So if you have a cavity on one tooth, and it is, um, say it's two surfaces, like a mesial occlusal. That's gonna be a different code of if it was on a back tooth versus an anterior tooth, they're different codes. If you're using an amalgam, which you never, we don't use in our offices because I think amalgam is terrible, um, it's gonna be a different code than a composite code, which is the, co which is the, the substance that we use at our offices. Okay. So I know that's a lot of information. I'm going to play some videos here after this that's going to summarize that probably better than I can with some animations, but I just want to recap on all the knowledge you know. Number one, you know how to teeth number, you know, one through 32. You know the surfaces of the teeth, occlusal, mesial, distal, all that fun stuff. You know what a prophy is and you know what probing depths are. You know what a deep cleaning is or um, an SRP versus a prophy. You have a very, very, very basic knowledge of dental codes and you know that one code is specific to one dental procedure.